She tell you she had me do it? It's not enough that she want it done, man. She gotta put that shit on me, too. She just wants it to fuck with me forever. Now, Power, do you have a history of leaving subtle hints and clues, sending us down the wrong direction, and then hitting us with the truth when we least expect it? Some examples that spring to mind was when Milan was under Ghost Nose the entire time. In Power Book 2 Ghost, Zeke said that Drew, Kane, and Diana were more like his brothers and sister, and we also had Brayden who said he looked old as fuck. Lo and behold, he did end up being Monet's eldest son, which was revealed towards the end of Season 2 of Ghost. In terms of raising Kanan, we had Unique who dropped a subtle hint he had a brother who was spending his natural life upstate. However, we know how power do. If it serves the storyline, if it serves the characters on the show, then they will always find a way to release them and integrate them into the power streets. So those are a couple of examples and of course there are others, but you get the gist. And this leads me onto two clues that raising Kanan have left. There's one from Season 1 and the second one is from Season 3. So in this video, we're going to be running through the foreshadows of DeWiz's brother potentially appearing in Season 3. We're also going to take a look at those other 9 prisoners that are now roaming the streets of power and we're going to take a look at a few scenarios, so definitely stick around till the end where I am going to touch on a few Breeze theories, but first things first, DeWiz's brother. Uh, my brother just got back from upstate. Truth is, I think she liked it better when he locked up. <laughs> at least you know where to find him. Now, DeWiz's brother is someone who was mentioned earlier season 1, episode 2. Unique one rock that the streets needed a body for Buck 20's death, and considering she was never going to give up Kanan, the unfortunate sacrifice had to be DeWiz. But just before she asked Lou to put the gloves on, they did bump into each other outside the bodega, which is where she asked him about his mother, and DeWiz's response was she was kind of nervous. His brother just got back from upstate, but the truth is, she liked it better when he was locked up. Now, while he was speaking, there was a look between Lou and Rock, and you get the feeling that they know who Dio is his brother is. Derek got you the guns you used on Bug 20, didn't he? I know his brother's a wild boy. Figure he must have gas stashed up in the crib. So Rock and Lou definitely know who Dio is his brother is, and these are two clues that they left in season one. Isn't a coincidence. It's why I broke down some of the examples at the beginning of this video, especially how Unique mentioned he also had a brother upstate. Now, we all know what followed with Lou pulling a trigger on Dio is, which is something he didn't want to do but something he had to do in order to kind of protect Kanan. It was between Kanan and DeWiz, but the impact that this had on Lou is still felt till this very day, and we're gonna come to that in just a moment. But the key takeaways and what we know about DeWiz's brother is, is that his mom's was very nervous when he got home. She liked it better when he was upstate, maybe because in prison they could control him, because he is said to be a wild boy. Lou knew the moment he pulled the trigger, there was no going back. He was said to be the man to get shit done, and get shit done right, and no doubt, in the early stages of raising Kanan, he did stay true to those words that the older Kanan spoke of, but doing what he did to DeWiz was a game-changing moment, and you could tell how much it affected him mentally. He missed Warrell, he was thinking about leaving the game, and he turned to music as his way out, and started to drift from the street life. I can't do this no more. I'm not doing it, I'm done. I should have been done. When you had me put down, young boy. This was the final straw for Lou when he found out what Rock had Kanan do. It was bad enough that she asked him to get rid of DeWiz, but having Kanan pull the trigger on a cop, that was the final straw. And on a quick side note, Lou is the only Thomas family member that doesn't know that Howard is Kanan's father by the way. Kanan found out in season 2 and so did Duke. Rock then had no choice to tell Marvin in 301, but Lou is the only one who doesn't know, so it is going to be very interesting to see when and if he does find out. But having said that, DeWiz's death pushed him to the brink, he was done. He wanted out of this street life, because he couldn't do it anymore and it all came back around to DeWiz. In 301, he finally opened up to Kanan. He came clean about how he was the one who was behind DeWiz's death. Rock told him that she made the decision, but she didn't tell him that it was Lou who was the one who actually pulled the trigger. Again, on a quick side note, Duke saw DeWiz get into the car with Lou the same night, and we all know how smart she is, so Duke definitely knew. Now, Lou was hurting for more reasons than one when he made the call to Kanan in 301 to come and meet him at Rock's old home, which was feeling like more of a house. Not only was the DeWiz situation weighing heavy on his shoulders, he lost bulletproof records because Rock took crown share which he only learned of when he went to the bank. He also lost Zeezer in the mob's attack and his relationship with the rest of the Thomas family isn't exactly in the best of places. But the bottom line in this conversation was DeWiz. You can tell how much Lou was hurting. He wanted to get it off his chest and how much he just wanted to talk to someone that understood him with Kanan. They both shared this common issue with Rock where they both felt trapped under a thumb. For both of them, it was always Rock's way or no way, and this is where it's got to them. Now, having said all of that, 
The theme of this video is how the writers always drop subtle hints and clues around characters that could pop up and surprise us. So with the recent mention in memory of D-Wiz, are they laying the early foundation for D-Wiz's brother to appear at some point in season 3? I really wouldn't be surprised. Kane is now in the streets looking for ways to create his own hustle. We know he's been rejected by Simrad, but we also know that won't stop Kanan from building his own organization. Ishmael Snaps Henry will play a part at some point, but could also deal with his brother. It's definitely a character worth keeping in mind, as are the other nine mystery prisoners who were released along with Ronnie Mathis. Wrongfully imprisoned men are released this week. As you may remember, Detective Sacristano was found guilty of manufacturing evidence against at least 10 men. Now as Kanan and Duke were at the hospital, the camera panned to the TV where we saw a news reporter give the news of how 10 men were being released because of how a dirty cop manufactured the evidence. We all know Ronnie Mathis was one of them, but who are the other 9? It goes back to the theme of this video where nothing is ever a coincidence and the writers have definitely left this subtle hint for a reason. If we hear about any more being released or any further fallout, then I definitely think they're cooking something big. So if they release any more or we come across one or two of these other 9 men, then who could they be? In season 2 we met Vernon Stark after Kanan went to visit him in prison. He is Defcon's brother, who was said to be in prison for stealing old people's welfare money. So could he potentially be one of the 9 men that are released? Or are they going to tease us throughout season 3 and keep us in suspense, until it's time for a huge reveal? And dare I say, is this how they could perhaps introduce Breeze? We all know the lines are being drawn between Kanan and Rock in terms of their relationship. He's also about to get into the mix in the streets despite being rejected by Simrad. Sooner or later, he's also going to come across a couple of old heads, which will be Ishmael Snaps Henry. But could Breeze be another? And is this when they piece a puzzle together around who Breeze is, either being D-Wiz's brother or one of the prisoners that find themselves released? Ever since season 1 when we heard about D-Wiz having a brother, I've always said that he's the most likely candidate to be Breeze. I've also never been on board with the theories of Marvin, Unique, Howard or anyone else that we've seen being Breeze, because it just makes zero sense. Having said that, I also don't think Ronnie is Breeze either, and there are two reasons. Ronnie seems like he's calculating and smart, and Breeze was said to be strong, but not smart. The second point is, Grantham Coleman has been casted to play a lead role in another TV show, and I think that pretty much settles the debate. I mean, there are other actors who have roles on multiple TV shows, but if he's a lead on another, it does raise the question, where does that leave his story on raising Kanan? So for me, I'm not on board that Ronnie is Breeze either. I personally think that it will be D-Wiz's brother, or it is going to be one of the 9 men that have been released from prison. So that's the breakdown of where we are when it comes to the mystery of D-Wiz's brother. How they could be setting the stage for him to appear at some point in season 3, and potentially looking for revenge for D-Wiz's death. But also how we need to keep in mind there are other 9 prisoners who have been released. Who are they? And could one or two of them have ties to some major players in Queens? I think it definitely is a possibility, and it is something that can't be ruled out. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time